ultrasound of normal early pregnancy. Endovaginal ultrasound is the imaging modality of choice in evaluation of the first trimester pregnancy. It provides the highest resolution images for better evaluation of pregnancy. The sinologist performing the examination must be familiar with the appearances of normal early pregnancy and the appearances of ectopic gestations and failed pregnancies. Misunderstanding of normal anatomy and developmental milestones may lead to incorrect diagnosis and incorrect treatment. Fertilization of the ovum occurs in the fallopian tube. And it starts cell division as it moves down the fallopian tube. Once gets into the uterine cavity, it digs hole. And burrows itself into the endometrium eccentrically, and covers itself over. This is the first sign that we look an ultrasound, which is called intradecidual sac sign. Intradecidual sac sign is seen by transvaginal ultrasound, 4 to 4.5 weeks after last menstrual period. On ultrasound, it is a small 2 mm cyst, located eccentric to the central echogenic line, and it has thin echogenic rim around. There are some mimics which may be confusing. Such mimicker are intracavitary fluid, decidual cyst, which usually located at the endometrium meometrium junction. However, intradecidual sac sign is close to the central white line and may have little color flash beside. As the gestational sac starts to grow, we get the double decidual sac sign. The decidua is the endometrium of the first trimester. Double decidual sac sign occurs about five weeks. We have rounded or oval fluid collection that is surrounded by echogenic rim. This is called chorionic tissue. And the other echogenic ring around it, that is the decidualized endometrium. Mimics of double decidual sac sign is pseudogestational sac which is fluid collection within the endometrial cavity, and the one echogenic rim around, is the endometrium. When seen on one plane, it has acute angles, and giving to drop appearance. This occurs in 10 to 20 percent of ectopic pregnancy. And this is a blood or bleeding from the tube, that enters the endometrial cavity. Take home message. Any rounded or oval fluid collection in a woman with positive pregnancy test most likely represent an intrauterine gestational sac. Following visualization of the double decidual sac sign, the next visible milestone seen sonographically is the yolk sac. It appears about five and a half weeks of gestation. The presence of a yolk sac within a gestational sac confirms intrauterine pregnancy. The yolk sac has a thin wall smooth outline and spherical shape with a maximum diameter of 5 mm and should never be more than 5 mm. Calcified or thick wall yolk sac is abnormal and may be associated with pregnancy failure. Yolk sac plays a critical role in embryonic development by providing nutrients. Amnion develops embryologically before yolk sac, but yolk sac is easier to see. Visualization of yolk sac is useful in distinguishing intrauterine pregnancy from a pseudogestational sac, or an embryonic pregnancy. The number of yolk sacs is equal to the number of amnions. In multiple gestations, count yolk sacs to determine amnionicity. Yolk sac becomes obliterated as amnion fuses with chorion at 14 to 16 weeks. At 6 to 6 and half weeks, the embryo appears like a little dot on the yolk sac, which sometimes called diamond ring sign, where the diamond is the embryo and the ring is the yolk sac. Once the embryo is discreetly resolved, the longest axis is measured and referred to as the crown rump length. Cardiac activity may be seen as a flickering in this area before the embryo is sufficiently large enough to allow accurate measurement of length. At closer to 7 weeks, 
As the embryo enlarges, the amnion becomes visible surrounding it. The embryo is in the amniotic cavity, and the yolk sac is in the chorionic cavity. At 7 to 9 weeks, the amnion is expanding, and the yolk sac now is free floating out in the chorionic cavity. As continued growth and development progress, the embryo visibly changes from a dot to a grain of rice to a more kidney bean shaped structure. The embryo now renamed fetus at 10 weeks. By the end of the first trimester, organogenesis is complete. And the amnion getting over close to the chorion. But it does not fuse until 14 to 16 weeks. So to review the order of appearance in early pregnancy. First, in trade sigil sac sign. Then, Double decidual sac sign, then yolk sac, then fetal pole and cardiac pulsations, then amnion. Measurements in early pregnancy. Mean sac diameter is a sonographic measurement of the gestational sac, which is usually first seen at around five weeks after the last menstrual period. Mean sac diameter is calculated by measuring the anechoic sac excluding the echogenic rim. The mean sac diameter is calculated by measuring length, plus height, plus width and then divide by 3. If the calculated mean sac diameter is out of range of the ultrasound machine, then the gestational age is calculated as following. The mean sac diameter in millimeters, plus 30 is equal to days of pregnancy. As soon as the embryo can be seen, the gestational age can be estimated by measuring the crown rump length. A correctly performed measurement of crown rump length is the most accurate estimation of gestational age in early pregnancy. However, accurate crown rump measurement can be the most difficult measurements to obtain during pregnancy. Crown rump length is the primary measure of gestational age between 6 to 13 weeks. To obtain crown rump length correctly, first, obtain mid sagittal view through embryo. Then make sure that the embryo or fetus is not flexed. Measure longest dimension of embryo from head to bottom, excluding the extremities. Any degree of flexion of the fetus will produce underestimation of the crown rump length. When linear calipers are used, Once the diagnosis of intrauterine pregnancy is established, it is essential to scan the entire pelvis to document the number of embryos. If there is multiple gestation, it is important to determine chorionicity as early as possible. The chorion forms a thick echogenic ring that completely encompasses the embryo. If more than one embryo is seen within a single chorionic ring, the pregnancy is monochorionic. The next step is to determine amionicity. As mentioned before, the amnion is a very delicate membrane that may not be seen in early gestation. However, the number of yolk sacs parallels the number of amnions. Therefore, if there are two embryos and two yolk sacs, it is highly likely that the pregnancy is a monochorionic diamniotic twin gestation.